Hello and welcome to Sensei Podcast. This is Manos Brilakis discussing with leaders in the field of CTO and Complex PCI. Sensei means teacher or master in Japanese. The goal of the Sensei Podcast is to help you learn and improve in CTO and Complex PCI so that you can become the best that you can be and offer your patients the best possible results. So, hello everyone and welcome to Sensei Podcast. It is my great pleasure to introduce Dr. Salman Lalana, who we had the privilege to have worked with us over the last year and now he's uh, uh, becoming the director of CTO and Complex Interventions at UT Southwestern uh, Medical Center in Dallas, with which I have obviously great ties and worked there for many years. So, Salman, first of all, thanks for spending a year with us and uh, congratulations and uh, thanks for being part of the podcast. Thank you so much for inviting me here, Manos. It's a, it's a privilege and an honor. So, Salman, I still remember when we first met in uh, Milwaukee where you were working at uh, uh, the Medical College of Wisconsin, and it was uh, uh, one of the longest proctoring sessions I've had. <laughs> Crazy cases. But, you know, what amazed me is that you were already, you know, attending for several years. You had your own program, you had a fellows, and you decided to take a break and um, essentially start and... Uh, learn something more. So how did this happen? Because that's not very common. What was your thinking and wh- why did this all happen? Um, that's a great question, Manos. And many times I ask this question uh, to myself, uh, but but in all seriousness, uh, I, um, I, I when I graduated from fel- interventional fellowship, I never imagined myself doing CTOs, uh, to be honest. Uh, I was more uh, like many other fellows who were, who were coming out around 2016, um, I was more uh, interested toward doing structural interventions, and that's what my first job was, the director of the structural heart interventions at, at a, a private practice hospital. And my first uh, focus was to develop and, and grow a structural heart disease program. And, um, you know, um, as I was doing that, you know, it just uh, you just need one person to change your perspective. And, and that's what happened to me um, around uh, 2017, 28, early 2018. I remember uh, seeing a patient uh, who was 77, uh, had a uh, cardiomyopathy, ischemic cardiomyopathy, um, and uh, with a very severe uh, left main uh, bifurcation disease, calcified. He was turned down by surgery, um, and uh, he was turned down by two other interventionalists. And he was he was one of the most symptomatic patients I've I've seen because he he would eat and then he would could not walk for about two hours because he would have angina after eating, um, and, and so he's his diet decreased. He lost a lot of weight and he was just miserable. And 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 he he came to me and and see if he can do something for him. And uh, that was a very complex case. And of course, my definition of complex has changed over the past few years. Uh, but at that time, it was a very complex case. And um, but he was so symptomatic uh, that uh, we decided to take it on uh, after discussion of the risks and benefits um, and uh, put impella in, uh, uh, rotational atherectomy, got a good, excellent bifurcation result. And he just felt remarkably better. Uh, and uh, his EF improved. Uh, and, and that's when I realized uh, that we, we talk about disparities in healthcare uh, with respect to uh, you know, race or socioeconomic status uh, or, or uh, gender. But there's also a disparity in healthcare with respect to the kind of disease process uh, a patient has and what area the patient lives in. And, and that's when I realized that we really, there, there are a lot of patients who have complex coronary artery disease, CTOs, uh, who are not getting the treatment for multiple reasons, for either lack of expertise or the way our healthcare system is designed. Um, so um, I got more interested in learning about it. Uh, and, and of course, with the word of mouth, I got more cases uh, referred to me. And the more cases I did, the more uh, interested I became. And, uh, and, and, then, um, and then, you know, I decided to learn more about CTOs just out of curiosity. Um, and uh, of course, you know, I, I read the Bible of CTO interventions, which is your book, uh, <laughs> which, was, uh, which was, I was just fascinated, of course, uh, reading about anti-grade wire escalation, ADR, and then uh, I was reading about retrograde and dissection re-entries. And I was just, just, it was very conceptually, it was very difficult for me to absorb that. How can you get from a true lumen to a dissection plane back into the dissection plane from true lumen? 
is it really possible? Uh, I had never seen cases like that before. So it really, really uh, piqued my curiosity uh, and interest. And um, I, I saw a few cases online. And then I went to the CTO Summit uh, in um, uh, 2019. And uh, my jaw just dropped seeing the cases uh, everyone was doing. Uh, at the time, very complex cases uh, with good results and good outcomes. So um, at that time, I decided that that's really what I really want to do in the future. Um, and, um, and, and so uh, I went back and started doing more uh, complex interventions, not dived into CTOs yet, uh, uh, but, uh, but, but, but as I learned more about it, that's what I decided I wanted to do. And, um, and and then I, I switched uh, jobs uh, to uh, uh, Mel College of Wisconsin um, in 2019. Uh, and then there my focus was uh, to uh, develop a coronary disease program um, and do more interventions, get on the job training uh, as a CTO uh, by using proctors. Um, and uh, I wasn't ready to go off structural procedures yet, uh, but at the time, because um, my goal was to learn more and see where my career goes, uh, but there was clear that I was more interested in doing these interventions. And, uh, and, and the few months were tough because, uh, because the pandemic, the volumes had gone down. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, uh, but at, at that time, you know, it was, it was good because I got more time to, to learn more about it. See, I watched a lot of online cases, uh, read you, saw your YouTube videos, uh, read a lot of articles. Uh, so I, I kind of, and the more I kind of uh, learned about it, the more I realized how much I don't know. So, um, uh, so, so then started diving into uh, low complexity, JCTO zero, one uh, CTOs, uh, continue to build the complex coronary program. And then uh, in December of 2020, uh, Cal came in to proctor me uh, for, for very complex cases. And that was just a remarkable experience. Uh, I remember that case because we were stuck in failure mode for a while. And then we were about to start. And when I told Cal, it's like, let's just try ADR one more, one more time. And that worked. We got a great result. Um, and, and then, uh, you know, continue to do CTOs. Of course, my next, uh, it did ADR uh, uh, at, uh, on my own. And then my uh, got did about did it for about three to four months, and then I decided to get more proctors in for for more uh, uh, training, especially the retrograde cases. And you came in, uh, proctored me for uh, uh, two very complex cases. One of those cases still remains one of the complex I've done, um, and and you're really patient uh, with me, and that uh, was I was very grateful for that case, and and I learned a lot uh, from that case. Uh, but one thing I realized was that uh, it took me about six months between two proctorship sessions. And those were due to multiple uh, multiple issues, of course, some systems issues and, and the fact that the industry had uh, decreased their budget uh, for proctorships. So I realized that if I have to continue to, to get better at it and improve my skill set, I either I have to get in more proctorship sessions and, and get... Uh, uh, and get these cases uh, on a regular basis for the next few months, um, or I uh, 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 do a dedicated uh, CTO fellowship. Um, and um, uh, to be honest, I actually was getting really, pa I've gotten really passionate about uh, doing uh, CTOs and complex coronaries, and, and I decided to apply for a CTO fellowship, uh, and you were gracious enough to uh, allow me to work with you for a year. Uh, so, so that's how it all transpired. <laughs> So again, amazing story and, you know, a lot of things happening, but still, I mean, the crux of the matter is that you're again in attending, you know, making an X amount of salary, you're very comfortable, you have a very good reputation in your place, and then you drop it all for a year, become a fellow again. Now, you did save some money from not having lunches, but still, <laughs> I mean, right, that was, a, that was a big change. And how did the family take it? How do you think, and, you know, becoming, getting a trainee mode, it's also a little mindset as well. There's some issues with, you know, some people may not be willing to get instruction or how did that, uh, how were you comfortable with this process? Yeah, so I, I think there were uh, some push factors and some pull factors. Uh, of course, uh, the pull factor was, of course, working with you for a year. Um, and that was, uh, of course, I've always admired you and uh, like, like 
all interventional cardiologists and 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 uh, trainees, uh, and working with you for about a year was like uh, something that was that was really a great opportunity uh, for me to learn and and to grow. So that was a major pull factor. Um, the male. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, and of course the push factors uh, were uh, that but what I mentioned you know uh, that I wanted to increase my skills and I want to grow and uh, the pace that I was growing uh, I thought was a little slower than I expected and maybe it was just me uh, but uh, but I thought that if I want to do this uh, if I want to really uh, hone my skills in doing this um, uh, I need to uh, I need to be doing this more frequently because I thought uh, a proc two proctorship sessions between six months were a bit too long, mm -hmm. and of course with the with the with the industry um, uh, having issues with proctorships, so so I think those were the push factors. Um, I mean the most important thing was my family was great. I mean my wife was a rock and she was more confident about uh, having me go through the fellowship than I actually ever was. <laughs> Um, and so, so she really, really supported me. I mean, if she had not supported me, I wouldn't have been here at all. Um, and our, our son uh, was, uh, oh, he was two years old. So we were still kind of uh, uh, flexible in moving. So, so I think, uh, and, and of course, you know, the, uh, um, uh, I wasn't attending for a while. So, so I, I thought that I could uh, keep going on with, with the salary uh, for a fellow for a year. Uh, so, so I think all those uh, things were uh, taken into consideration. And to be honest, when you offered me the fellowship, and I was uh, like, you know, it was it was it was hard for me to take that decision. Uh, but of course, with my wife's support and the fact that you know, if I I am gonna commit an error, um, you know, if I leave my job, which I'm really uh, stable at. Um, uh, should I do an error of omission or an error of commission? <laughs> or so, so I decided to uh, do an error of commission and take a leap of faith. And and to be honest, you know, it was it was uh, it was I was uh, really grateful. And the opportunity to work, to work for you was to work with you was just uh, too good to pass. Well, you were very kind, obviously. And again, the rest is history, as we say, and it's been a phenomenal year. You know, lots of great cases. I think we helped also the surgeons increase their volume too. <laughs> uh, so what was the thing that you found most difficult uh, in this year to learn and to do? Um, I think um, lots, of, uh, lots of things. Um, uh, of course, we, uh, uh, I think patient selection uh, is one of the difficult things. Uh, to it, it's hard most of the times to know exactly which patients are going to benefit, which not patients are not going to benefit, because as we know, most of the CTO uh, CTOs do not present with classic angina, and and patients we see they have so many other reasons to have shortness of breath and fatigue and tiredness, which are also the symptoms of CTO. So so the patient selection was uh, was was a great learning uh, point. With respect to the technical skills, I think. Uh, I, I think that uh, the fellowship is more uh, kind of taught me more with respect to the cerebral component of it. Um, um, uh, so like, you know, if you're stuck in a failure mode, what can we do? We need to have, we need to be four steps ahead. And that constant thinking, which can often sometimes lead to cognitive fatigue and getting over that was, was I think the one thing that I really, really learned uh, because there are always options and to explore those options. And while we are doing it during the procedure, because CTO PCI, things change constantly. And to be keep thinking about our future, the, what what the next step would be, and if that step fails, what the next step would be, when we're going to switch strategies, and what other options do we have? So, so I think learning that uh, is, I think, the the key factor uh, over the past year uh, that I had uh, with respect to technical skills. I think I think ADR is the most difficult to learn. Um, I think um, uh, getting. Um, uh, because it doesn't work every time, and and uh, there are cases where it would work great. There are cases it won't. Um, 
Uh, so, but but I think by far the most important component is the cerebral component that comes with the training, and that's what I learned a lot of. And of course, managing complications. Uh, we have to be comfortable with managing complications, uh, and and be and be comfortable with getting complications, so that we are comfortable managing those complications. Because if we're going to do this, uh, we will have complications, and it's more important to 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 recognize those complications early and 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 to and to fix those um i mean how many times you look at the the ecg is just remarkable that you anticipate the way you do it it's like at seeing the ecgs all the time um and and anticipating what would be the problem uh it's just it was just remarkable uh learning from you with with that with the the cerebral component of it well, you know, the CTO, we had a fair share of complications. And, you know, part of it is you get more comfortable, more familiar with it. So when it happens, it's less phases you are. But still, we had some cases where, you know, things didn't go well and the patient got to surgery or had uh, even died. So how does that affect you? I mean, obviously, the intent is to help the patients, but, you know, rarely, but not, ne- not never, you do get these complications. How are you able to deal with this mental stress? Um, I mean, um, that's and and that does take a toll on you. Um, uh, of course, you know, I was uh, very uncomfortable uh, starting early in my career. I was very, very uncomfortable with complications, um, and uh, I would take it really, really hard, uh, and I would be depressed uh, every time I would have a complication. I remember, uh, uh, like, I think six months into uh, my, uh, I, I, can, I can tell you, my third case as an attending. Uh, in a new hospital ever, my third case, I perforated a coronary artery. And uh, and of course, we did a ping pong technique, delivered a covered stent. We had a Joe Med stent at that time and we went. things went great. Of course, the patient had a prolonged course, but that was, that really hit me hard uh, at that time. Although the patient did well, eventually. Um, and, and then uh, I had a, a patient who died after uh, I had a tower, a valve and valve tower, uh, and the patient passed away. Uh, uh, so so I, I, I really took complications really hard. It really affected me a lot. I was depressed for like weeks. Um, uh, but I think as, as things have gone, um, I've got, gotten more experienced. Uh, I think uh, I've, I've tried to handle them better. Um, I think I've gotten more um, used to the fact that, I mean, of course, you can never be used used to getting uh, patients having complications uh, because that does affect uh, their lives and affects your life. But I think um, I, I've got some solace, uh, not a lot, but some solace that, uh, you know, if we're going to do these, uh, we will benefit a lot of patients and there will be some complications that will happen. So rather than... Uh, uh, you know, for the for the greater good, you have to. There there is uh, some complications that will happen, so you gotta get better at managing and recognizing recognizing those complications early on. Um, so so that's what I have started to uh, believe now. Um, and of course, last year was also we had uh, our share of complications, which were a great learning experience uh, for me. And um, but. Uh, uh, but uh, but but I think I have I have started to take them better than what I used to um, uh, years ago. So, and you know this is always challenging, obviously, and it's not easy for everyone to go out to the family and explain to them why things didn't go well and what can be done. And um, you know, it's psychological. And actually, I always tell people who train, you know, it's the best time to have your complications when you're training yeah. because you're kind of covered in a way. But the reality is, no matter it will happen. But it's still amazing to me that you know you. Um, uh, you, you've done all the structural cases. You have a lot of experience in structural cases, but now you you pivoted to a new to a new area, and that flexibility of mind and uh, uh, you know just the willingness to change that's still uh, remarkable for many people. Were you always like this? Be able to rethink things and um, update, revise, or how, is it a natural thing for you? Does it come with a cost? How how, how did it work for you? <laughs> um, I don't know how to answer that question. I mean. Um, of course, I mean, uh, I I always, uh, yeah, I mean, I've always been flexible in the way I, I want to do things, um, and of course, open to to a lot of things, um, and and um, I mean, I I I have um, what, what I think is like you know, you learn and then you see how how it suits you if you really want to do it, and and you learn something new, and and you see you know, 
keep those things in perspective as to, you know, what you really want to do. Is that something that you want to do just because, you know, it's it's it, there's glory in it or there's more fame in it or just because you really want to do something and, and you really uh, want to help the patients uh, and does, does that support your interests? I remember, you know, coming out of medical school, I, I wanted to do uh, urology and then changed to change to oncology. Then when I was in cardiology, I wanted to do advanced heart failure. And, and so things changed as I learned. Uh, so I think, I think uh, open to, uh, to learning new things um, and, uh, and then, and then uh, see if it excites you. And, um, and, and, I think, and I think that's what CTOPCI did for me, that it really excited me. Uh, because every case is so different and you got encounter challenges in every case which are unique um, and and it's it's kind of like a, a, a like a, a permutation effect that uh, that you know you do one thing and that can go another direction if you do another thing that can go another direction so there's a lot of uh, problem solving that comes with it uh, which of course excites you uh, and 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 the, the the fact that you know you can problem solve uh, through it, uh, that's what excites me a lot um, with this field. So you also you've been you know one of the remarkable few people who has been very productive in the research part. You know done great analysis on the progress, uh, a lot of case uh, reports, a lot of case series. So you're able to combine the academic component as well as with the clinical component. Um, so how how does that fit into the into the overall picture? How did you find that useful on the clinical side? You think it feeds off each other? How, how were you able to multitask in, in a way in so many areas? Um, I mean, uh, uh, the first thing is, I mean, all all uh, uh, because you've given me that flexibility to do that, uh, which has been great. Um, I mean, of course, uh, we have got some great cases, and uh, and uh, w w with respect to the cases, uh, one thing, of course, uh, I tend to do is uh, is is go back uh, to those cases and 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 see what uh, learning that and, and see what we could have done differently. Uh, or even if you're successful, could we have done the specific strategy uh, differently? Or uh, so. So, what were the options, and what options we chose? What we could have chosen. And and while doing that, and I think that has really helped me. And and while doing and and those uh, writing those those case and and the uh, presentations and getting those has helped me process through my learning. So I think that has really helped me learn more uh, about. Um, uh, uh, about the cases we do and the different strategies that we can use. <clears throat> um, and uh, with respect to the the research, I think uh, uh, it's 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 amazing how much uh, CTO PCI is prevalent, uh, and we don't have a lot of randomized controlled trials uh, that give us answers to so many questions uh, that uh, that we the, the answers to which we don't know. Uh, and I think uh, when when we don't have randomized control trials, and many many times uh, the real world studies, uh, like the studies in progress CTO, gives us a lot of information. And so um, I, I've always been um, like uh, the the fact that you know we got to learn uh, what we can do better. Uh, and, and so I think that component, the research gives you that component. Uh, uh, writing a paper, you actually read 20, 25 articles. So writing an editorial, you read so many articles. And that's why I love writing editorials. And I, I ask you to, to, you know, let's write more editorials always because I just love it because uh, uh, you read 10, 15, 20 more articles and you learn so much. And so it's, it's a learning exercise. And I think uh, uh, it gives you an opportunity to... Uh, 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 to to learn more in the field, many times you know some things that, and you always come across things yet that you don't know. Uh, like uh, I was uh, working on the tipping paper, and and you know I came across this uh, technique called aortic catch it technique as well. So 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 there's a lot of things you learn, and that that again that learning that new thing excites me, and and so that's why I think uh, I really uh, want to keep learning. That gives me an opportunity to learn. 
Um, so, um, and of course that's happened because uh, we have the resources available here to do that kind of research and and you've been a great mentor um, uh, through that, so. Well, I think you've done, uh, you know, the more most editorials, I think, than any other fellow we've had, and phenomenal work on those. And also, as you said, uh, I mean, learning, looking at the case back and thinking about it really helps you. And again, you'll be phenomenal. I think you've contributed the n- largest number of cases to the online uh, uh, CTO, CTO series. And, and it's true that even my, myself as well, when I look at those back, then some new ideas come, okay, potentially this could have been done different. So in a way, you know, people think of research and clinical as two different and so for spectrum, in reality, they're the same thing. I mean, one is doing something, but then everything that we do is based on everything that's done before. And the research essentially is just summarizing what's done before and how it helps you um, to go forward. So um, a lot of connection over there. Yeah, absolutely right, Alex. Now, uh, in terms of the um, of the teaching, I know that you've taught many fellows already in your previous position. You've taught with the fellows here as well. You'll be teaching a lot of fellows at UT Southwestern. Is there something that you look for in the people who come to train? Is there things that get you excited, like this person is going to be great? Or it's something that you cannot really predict and it depends on how things go? <laughs> um, I think um, for me, um, uh, I, I think the most important thing for me is uh, is uh, the interest level and the the uh, uh, what I would say is is the attitude of the fellow. Uh, if you have, uh, for example, an international fellow who is uh, like the way I was, I was uh, uh, taught during my training was that when I was in my international training, I was I was doing all the cases, I was doing right heart cats, I was doing all the diagnostics, because uh, because every di- because uh, I remember uh, my uh, my uh, program director telling me the first patient that may die on your table would be from a diagnostic cat. And so you really need to be good at doing all these cases. So, uh, so if a fellow, uh, either international or a general fellow, is 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 like uh, it tells me that you know, oh, that's a diagnostic case, and you know, we we I'm only going to do interventions, and that's not the right attitude. I believe I think uh, the right attitude is important. You need to go in every case, even right heart cath. You learn a lot, um, and. Uh, so, so you need to go in and and do these cases, and and I think uh, that uh, that uh, that attitude uh, really strikes you uh, as someone who who's really uh, uh, is going to put in time and effort to learn things new, uh, to learn new things. Um, also, the the interest level, uh, if they're really interested in doing, they would uh, in 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 doing a particular thing, they would really be interested in. They would uh, like if we have a complex case, uh, the fellows would have looked at the images before uh, and come up with some solutions uh, that you know this is what we need to do. And it's always a great exercise with them as to something you know they always bring a perspective that you had not thought about. And so okay, fine, that that's actually a great idea. Let's let's do that way. And and my idea is like you know it's it's your idea is better so so I think you learn a lot fellows teach you a lot, and and so uh, I think for fellows who are interested and enthusiastic and and wanting to learn uh, are the kind of fellows that I really enjoyed uh, working with. Now, if uh, they start working and you see that their skills may not be their hand skills may not be quite as developed, does that bother you or you think that can fixable with training and time? I, th- I think there. I, I think. I think it's more uh, for me. It's uh, more the cerebral component. Uh, I remember uh, my my first job. Uh, I had uh, uh, a tech uh, who was just really, really good. Uh, of course, he didn't uh, uh, do the interventions, but but I, I I told him that you know you can you can look at coronary arteries before we even inject dye, because he was really really good because he had done cases. He was so so I think that that kind of uh, he would anticipate what what needs to be done before anything he would have a wire ready he would have the catheter ready so 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 uh, so i think it's it's more i think that the skills can be learned over time if you do keep doing these cases i think that the skills if you are really willing to put in the hard work uh then then i think the skills can be learned uh i think uh, uh many people focus more on technical skills uh uh, but but there's another component, uh, which is a cerebral component, to it, which I think is more important to focus on. And that comes before the case, during the case, and even after the case. Yeah, absolutely. Now, in terms of um, um, being able to do all this, you know, long cases, many hours in the lab, <clears throat> uh, lead, back issues, how, how do you keep fit and uh, in both, uh, you know, in a 
physical but also psychological uh, condition <laughs> um, I mean I I do um, of course I, I uh, about you know for the past 18 18 to 20 months I've created this habit of uh, uh, running every morning before I come to work and I think that's really really helped me uh, I would I would I would work out for like a half an hour to 45 minutes before I come to work and I think that makes me feel really well uh, mentally and and physically and I would want to do more cases uh, doing that um, and I, th I think the physical component of course uh, I, I do engage myself in a lot of sports um, uh, summers are cricket season for me. Uh, although last last year was kind of uh, uh, I couldn't because I, I fractured my toe while playing cricket. But uh, and, and and winters are usually I, I play uh, other sports like badminton and uh, uh, and uh, 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 squash. Uh, of course, I'm running out of players now, so <laughs> so uh, I've started playing pickleball, which is which is which is such a great game. So especially over the weekends. So, so try to keep uh, active overall. Uh, my three-year-old son now, he's as he's getting to that age, he's making us more active. Um, of course, he, every weekend is like he wants to go out, and 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 so he's keeping me very, very engaged and active, uh, both physically and psychologically. Um, and uh, and and so uh, so those have been a great. Uh, uh, his uh, those those are those those are very really, helps me psychologically too, of course. I mean, uh, relaxing on the weekends a little bit, watching a movie, uh, and and reading. Uh, I I really like uh, reading uh, mystery novels, and and so just just sitting down. Uh, uh, I think I think the best time I would relax is uh, a day and just sit down, do nothing, just read a mystery novel. Uh, I think that relaxes me a lot. Um, so I, th I think those are the things that uh, that kind of help me. Um, so what's your favorite book since we're talking about novels? <laughs> so I actually, uh, I, I really like mystery novels and I, I, I grew up reading John Grisham and, and Sidney Sheldon and uh, John Grisham especially, the, his books are amazing. Many of them have been made into movies. One of the, uh, the Chambers is one that I really liked uh, and uh, The Runaway Jury. Um, Sidney Sheldon, I read a lot of his books. Uh, my favorite one of his is Nothing Lasts Forever. Uh, but there's a recent book I read uh, uh, by uh, Alex uh, Mikhailendis. I, am, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name correct. It's, it's a Greek last name. Um, and and uh, that was The Silent Patient. And that's one of the best mystery novels I've read. Uh, it, it's based on, uh, uh, on a background. It's inspired by uh, Greek mythology. Uh, with uh, the Admetus King and Alestus, Alcestis, uh, who was his wife. And it is just a remarkable book. I could never anticipate how it ended. Uh, so, so, so I think recently, The Silent Patient, that's been um, the, the, the best book of mine. It's like a CTO, right? You never know how it's going to turn out. <laughs> exactly. And, and when it turns out great, and it excites you more. <laughs> how about any favorite movies? My favorite movie is Shawshank Redemption. Uh, I love that movie. I've watched it so many times, uh, um, um, and uh, it, it's it's such a great movie. It's it's about um, hope. It's about perseverance. It's about facing trials and tri tribulations, um, and you know, and keeping an eye on the goal, making making the best out of a worse situation. Uh, every scene in that movie is just so amazing and keeps you engaged. Uh, Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman are amazing in that movie. And I think by far Shawshank Redemption is my favorite movie. Uh, there's another movie I really like a lot is My Cousin Winnie, which is just, I crack up every time I see it. It's, uh, it's, uh, uh, so those are the two, two movies I've, I really enjoy and I've watched several times. It's actually funny. Uh... Uh, Redemption was also the favorite movie of Ziad Ali just a few minutes ago. Oh, so <laughs> just, uh, I guess there's a track, there's a record there. <laughs> there definitely to watch that one. Um, what are you most proud of so far? <clears throat> um, I, I, I'm proud of uh, the fact that, you know, uh, I have you as my mentor. I've learned a lot from you professionally and, and personally, uh, to be honest with you. Um, but, but I think, um, um, I hope I do things that I get proud of in the future. Uh, but, but, uh, but to be honest, uh, more than feeling proud, I'm, I feel very grateful. Um, I'm, I feel grateful for the opportunities that I've gotten. Uh, I feel grateful for us having a supportive family, uh, for having a wife who's, who's been like a rock to me, who despite having a good uh, career, has kept a family together. 
Um, and um, of course, my son, who's who's just growing up too fast and getting sassier by the day. Um, so, um, uh, so, so I'm just very grateful for all these um, uh, opportunities and all these uh, 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 instances in my life uh, that have made me a better person. And what excites you the most going forward? Uh, I, I know. I mean, it's it's. Um, it's of course uh, starting a new job, uh, starting and uh, developing uh, and expanding a program, working with new people, uh, knowing more people, of course, which is always fun. Um, getting into a new program, one thing that's always exciting is meeting new people um, and uh, working with the fellows, learning from them, um, and uh, and uh, 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 hopefully keep doing. Uh, you know. Um, uh, uh, to, to you know what what keep developing a program and and keep doing what I really want to do uh, at at a high level and and hope I'm hoping that I'm able to do that going forward. Well, I think you know I'm very happy. I think my friends and colleagues at UD Southwestern are very lucky to have you go <laughs> join you. them. I think it will work well for both. I think it's a great program and you'll make it even better bringing this uh, new skill set. So. Uh, it is it is a small world after all, but uh, um, you know what uh, uh, I love about you is that you just keep on growing and learning and being willing to do more and more things. And uh, again, everything has shown that so far, and our great things are ahead. So, if you had to give any uh, like few pieces of advice for people like in your shoes, people who are starting or who are early in their career and they want to uh, learn to do complex and CTO PCI, any pieces of advice uh, that you would give them. Um, I think, um, uh, I mean, if so, so the, the most important thing is that, you know, if we really want to do this, then, uh, be, we, uh, one has to give something up. And so, uh, it's, 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 uh, for that person to, to, to sort out as to, you know, what do you want to, what do you want to give up? Um, and I think I, 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 I gave up doing structural procedures, uh, and, and, um, of course, uh, so, so. Uh, and, and give give uh, and 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 I was able to uh, um, go from an attending position to uh, to a fellow position for a year. So so I think uh, the important thing is to realize that you know you cannot if you really want to do CTO PCI and complex PCI uh, at a higher level. If you really want to get there, uh, then you know you have to give something up. It can be you know um, and time with the family many times. Uh, it can it can. Um, and and especially it's it's a very learnable skill, but actually you have to put your put put a put 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 your time in. Uh, I cannot imagine how many uh, online cases I've I've seen. And of course, before before I actually especially uh, came into this fellowship, uh, and 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 so that's the one thing that you know. And the second thing is, I think uh, be open to learning. And I think you know there there there's like. They're always new things, and PCI has evolved so much, even in the past five six years uh, that we have seen. There's always something new. Be open to to learning new things. Uh, you would not know everything. It's it's uh, it's like a funnel, right? The more you learn, the more you realize how much you don't know. And so, so I think having that kind of a, an attitude um, that you know you want to keep learning, I think is key. And of course, sorting out the path that would work best for you. Uh, uh, you know, we have uh, a proctorships available, uh, learning through that path. Or, you know, if you want to pursue CTO PCI dedicated fellowships, of course, which are far and few uh, right now. Um, uh, so, so what path works best for you, uh, depending upon your personal circumstances? Um, and and so, um, uh, so, so I think, and 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 you know. Um, uh, and select the path that you really want to do. Uh, it, I mean, you may not be, and, and just keep working uh, to, towards it. I mean, it's possible that, you know, things may not work out initially, but if you keep trying, eventually they would. Um, so, well, again, congratulations for uh, spending uh, a challenging year with us and uh, congratulations on your new position. Again, it's going to be amazing. And of course, 
we're excited to keep on working together on many things in the years to come. So thanks again, Son. No, thank you so much, Manos. It's been an honor and a privilege uh, working with you. Uh, again, I, I cannot tell you enough how much I have learned from you personally um, and professionally. So so I'm, I'm very, very grateful uh, uh, to you and, and really proud of calling you as my mentor. Great. Thanks again. Thank you, Manos. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Sensei Podcast. 